You're listening to The Victory Podcast, a podcast that equips believers to live an extraordinary life. We pray that today's message will bless you abundantly and empower you to live a life of victory. Hey, welcome to The Victory Podcast. It's great to have you with us. Uh, Pastor Margaret, I'm so excited to do part one of this uh, Receiving Your Healing podcast with you. Well, it's uh, great to be talking about it. And, uh, you know, I was in healing school uh, this morning Mm -hmm. and this was a part of what uh, I was teaching on and all about faith. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's so important to know about faith. You know, I often think if I'd known about faith, I would have won six Wimbledons, not three, because it's all about the mind and about your mouth and and having confidence in, in what you believe. And because your mind is a battlefield, but uh, you know, Sir so in Hebrews 11:1, 1, it says, "Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen." When you come into the Bible, it's all—it's a faith book, and uh, faith is always now. Mm-hmm. Uh, why is it always wow. now? Because Jesus Christ, He fulfilled everything at the cross uh, for us to walk in that fulfillment of it now. So we as Christians can fulfill his will in the earth. And you start to find that uh, faith is the heavenly currency. And it's God's currency to us uh, to know faith because we have a spirit of faith. We have a measure of faith. And it's by grace through faith that we're we're saved. So he wants us to walk uh, here now in faith because we've often said the Our Father, let it be here on earth as it is in heaven. And he wants us to know his blessing now, his presence now, his love now, his healing now. Uh, you know, everything, all the promises is already given to us. And, uh, and when I, I think about a faith, I think, you know, the way that we really, uh, if people could say to me, because I went through a mess in my life and mm-hmm. depressed and a heart trouble, insomnia, and I found what the scriptures did in my life, and that's why faith is so important. If anybody said to me, uh, what is the thing that you learnt most? I'd say, well, I I learnt to speak properly. I learnt to change my life with my mouth. I love that. I learnt to speak faith and to say what God says. And when we say what God says, and people say, but... I, you know, I don't really believe it. I feel as though I'm lying. But I say, yeah. how can you lie when you say what God says? It's God's word. And, and, and that's a way to please God. It's incredible. That's right. And that. where we are, when you give your heart to Christ, you, you come into the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And we're sons and daughters of the Most High. We're more royal than royalty. And Christ comes to live on the inside of us. Mm-hmm. And he says, now take my word. And I feel the sad thing is today, even Christianity has watered the Bible down. Mm. And it's actually the faith book. And I think that's where so much deception mm. comes in. Yes. And you get the word of God into your heart. And he said in Romans 8, 11, that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead mm. dwells within you, making alive your mortal flesh. So... You start to meditate it, you start to speak it, you start to pray it, uh, you get close to God in that intimacy, and you start to find it becomes a part of you. I love that. That's so cool. I, I love how you say that you really learn to speak the Word of God. And reflecting on that right now, that's what Bible college did for me. I really began to know my identity in Christ and also learn how to speak the the language of God with the currency which is which is faith so yeah that's, well I, I learned that too in Bible school and now that's what I I try and teach at uh, healing school because uh, it's like a mini healing school it's on three mornings a week and that people can come and listen people who are sick or people going through depression uh, you know there you have people with cancer and mm. where people have that's that scripture there in Hebrews 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope is our blueprint. Wow. And if we're hoping for healing, we can add faith to it. And that's why God's wow. word is a faith book. Okay. And how do we get saved is when we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. He comes and lives on the inside of us. And it's exactly the same principle, whether it's for healing, blessing, your family, marriage, whatever it is. 
Fantastic. So focusing on healing, uh, we've got some points that you went through to, in today's session. It was great to go back. I would always go to healing school uh, when I could during like school break and things like that. It was great to go back and sit under your teaching. Uh, now, you mentioned what faith was. I think one thing that maybe as new Christians or um, it's sometimes overlooked, can you go into what your mind, your will, and your emotions is, or your, your physical body and your spirit, can you just... Uh, because I think that's, once we really understand that, we can really understand what is affecting our thoughts and what we should be actually speaking into our lives. Well, I think uh, when I was first learning this and I was meditating, there's a scripture that says, I am a spirit, I live in a body, and I have a soul. And I, I had never any understanding of that because I didn't have a Bible, I didn't really know. I thought my heart was my natural heart. Yeah. I didn't know when God speaks so often in the scriptures, a heart is your spirit man. And I remember I was meditating that and I was in prayer actually and I remember looking and seeing another me standing next to me. And I thought, oh, and it was like just a knowing and said, well, that's a real you. And uh, that's the spirit man, your spirit man, I've come to live when you gave your heart, my heart to Christ. Holy Spirit came to live in my human spirit. Wow. And uh, I started to understand that when I died, my spirit was what went to be with God. Mm -hmm. And my flesh went down under the ground or was cremated. Yeah. And my soul, it says in the scriptures, my mind area mm -hmm. is to receive the grafted word of the God. So we're tribe being spirit, soul, and body. And then I started to learn about the human spirit, the heart of man, that the Bible uh, is the spiritual book. This, this Bible here mm. is a spiritual book. Wow. Uh, you know, the heavens and the earth will pass away, but his word won't. Yes. And it's written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So uh, this Bible here is a spiritual book. Sickness is spirit. Mm. And uh, so we learn we can fight sickness yep. uh, with the word of God, which is faith. And so you start to learn that. And I thought, well, if I put enough word into my human spirit, because in Romans 8, 11 said, it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, mm -hmm. dwells within us, making alive our flesh, that I could put the word of God in, that healing would come. And when I went through depression and insomnia and heart trauma, I started to renew this mind. I started to meditate on the scriptures instead of worrying and meditating on my worries and cares and fears and stresses, I started to find the scriptures uh, to the answer to healing, mm -hmm. and I started to worry on them. I started to say what God says, thank you, Lord Jesus, by your stripes I'm here. Wow. I just thank you, Lord Jesus, you took my infirmities and sickness. When my mind was an absolute mess, I'd say, I have the mind of Christ. It didn't feel like it, it didn't yeah. look like it. Okay. But I started to say, uh, and the Lord says in the scriptures, uh, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. So I started to learn that this mind had to get renewed. And that's why I think so much comes against the Bible, against mm -hmm. the Word of God, uh, because in uh, it's back in the Old Testament, it says, He sent His Word and healed us and delivered us from all their destruction. Well, Jesus Christ is the Word of God, made yep. flesh, mm -hmm. and He dwell among us. And you even look at Jesus' life when he, if you look in the Gospels, he used to, when devil, the Satan came against him and, and he was tempted, he said, but it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And he came at the devil three times. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's this, this fight going on for faith. Yes. And that's why we are faith people. We have a spirit of faith. We have measure of faith. Uh, we're to speak faith. And we have an enemy. The thief comes to kill and destroy and defeat. Mm -hmm. But Jesus came that we have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. So one thing that comes to mind is, especially for new Christians or someone who hasn't really started to speak this faith language, you make it sound really easy. You really do. <laughs> uh, I started right back there so, where it wasn't easy. So my question is, was it very gradual for you to get to this point or and to, to start speaking the answer and not the problem? It's I think that's progressive. What you bring up. Okay. It's, it's progressive. You, 
you grow in it. And I remember when I first started, I wrote some scriptures down because I seemed to be desperate in every area of my life. So I'd, I'd have a sheet of paper and I'd write all these scriptures down on a sheet of paper and yeah. I'd start to memorize them. And homework. Homework. Uh, homework for our viewers. <laughs> yeah. I'd write them down and then I'd write all my problems down on another piece of paper. Okay. And I'd say, Lord, I give those to you. I don't need them anymore, but these answers. And I started to renew my mind with the answer to that problem. Like if there was fear, yep. uh, which I had a lot of fear, I'd say, I haven't got a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And I had fear when I started to say that. But it says, I haven't got a spirit of fear. Mm. A lot of people have fear. Yep. Care, worry, stress is a form of fear. Okay. And so it's spirit. It mm. says fear, I haven't got a spirit, a spirit of fear. Yep. So it is a spirit. So the word of God is spirit. So you fight that with the word of God and you start to find that that fear just decreases it gets less and less so you're not you're not ignoring it you're actually addressing it and you're facing addressing it. it you're facing your mountain you're saying no you haven't got a part of my life anymore christ lives in me mm. spirit of god is in me i haven't got a spirit of fear wow. but a power and love and so it's very powerful yep. and that's why <clears throat> it is progressive and it it takes time and but it's overcoming it's temporal it's subject to change. And in the scriptures it said, what is impossible to man is possible to God. Mm. And I think you look around in the world today, there's a lot of people in this mind area, depression, stress, worry, fear, all those areas are, are, are verse against faith. Yes. And that's why we reverse that curse mm. and we take hold of faith and we change how we think. We think on the answer and right. we call things be not as though they are. For those who have been in the faith and maybe they've uh, not so committed to speaking faith, what sort of encouragement would you have for them? I think sometimes maybe people have tried and, and given up or not seen the results that they were expecting. Um, have you maybe experienced that or know of any stories and what you might recommend oh. for those people? So yeah, many times I thought this is not working. It seems to have got worse. Okay, wow. Uh, but I'm not a quitter. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'd say to people, determine in your heart to do the will of God, no matter what. I'd rather die going home saying what God says and what man says about me. Wow. And that's why, uh, you know, God is true to his promises. Mm -hmm. And particularly I feel if you're pushing into prayer, a lot of people take the scripture and quote it, mm -hmm. but they never get to know the God. They never have that intimacy with him. And you know, the Holy Spirit lives within us and he really knows what we need. Uh, he really knows what scripture uh, that might bring you through whatever you're going through, whether it's a family thing, mm -hmm. whether it's your children, uh, whether it's addiction, uh, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit. And I always say to people, uh, anchor your soul, anchor your mind to that scripture you get from the Holy Spirit, because he does speak. Yes. He is a divine person. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote this book. Dear. He knows mm -hmm. what you and I need. And that's why he knows that we need faith for our faith to grow. And uh, some people, uh, you know, I used to say I, I felt as though I wasn't determined anymore. Life wasn't worth living. Mm. Uh, but I started to say I'm not a quitter. I am determined. I'm bold. I'm courageous. And I wasn't at all. Mm, okay. And, you know, the fear was there and uh, perhaps the anxiousness and the stress was still there. But I started to say it. And I had some friends around me that I would say it to. Okay. And we got stronger together. And that, I think, is such a key wow. uh, to get around people that are like-minded. Don't get around people all the time plonking all their worries on you and their fears on you and their cares on you uh, because that was what was happening to me. Everybody thought I was strong and they'd put everything on me. And I was just learning in this. And I thought, no, that's why I put myself into Bible school, healing school. I started to grow in faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I thought, I never knew I'd be doing what I'm doing today. I, I was in a place where I thought, I'm going to finish up at home with the Lord or in, mm. in a home somewhere. Yes. So that's how bad I was. But I took hold of it and I, I started to see just day by day there was this little change was happening. Amazing. Or a little bit of that fear had left or, uh, you know, I wasn't worrying so much. Or, and I started to see things in the family started to come into order. And I thought, this is working. There was just a little bit of hope there, and, but I was adding faith to it. And even my husband started to see me change and my mouth started to change. And I, I was speaking the answer and say, just in agreement with me. And, and you know, and, and it, 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 it just was gradual. Um, you know, I could say uh, through the gifts of the Spirit, I, I had uh, scoliosis, my back was healed, um, and, but just growing in faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Uh, I see a lot of people get healed, but then it's back again because they've never taken the opportunity. And that's really what I'm teaching in this, is to grow in faith, not the gifts. The gifts are different again, and we will get to that. But this is just that you in your own life God has given to us that we can go, grow in faith. And Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And if you look through Hebrews, you'll see all the great men and women of God of faith, uh, but they had to do it by faith. And that's why faith is important. This is why this, this is a faith book. Yes. And he's given it to us as our TV guide in life, our roadmap to success. He knows your destiny. You get into this and you can fulfill your destiny through the Word of God. <laughs> Speaking of books, you often share a story about your heart and how you would continue doing what with uh, to get a picture of your heart to, to make sure that you're confessing what your heart yeah. was actually like. So uh, that's quite a pretty practical piece of advice for people out there with conditions to, what would you say, find something that reminds you of what you're believing for? Well, I, I'd get encyclopedia and I got the picture of a heart and I just said, Lord, my heart's like that. I thank you. My heart is, is healed and whole. Uh, you took any malfunction uh, with my heart. You took my infirmities and my sicknesses and I would pray that and talk. And I was on medication. Yeah. Probably a year and a half. I was going to ask. It wasn't two days, was it? No, no, it wasn't two days. Uh, but you know what? It was worth going after. Yeah. And, you know, an athlete knows uh, to get to Wimbledon or whether you have to practice and you train and you go after that goal. And I had that goal there. Lord, I wanted to be well. I wanted to be healed. I didn't want to be on medication for the rest of my life. I didn't want to be on medication for depression. Mm. I didn't throw the depression medication away. I took Dr. Jesus' medication as well as mm. the other. Great. I took the doctor's medicine for the heart as well as the other. But then one day the Dr. Jesus' medicine overtook the depression medicine and the heart tablet medicine. And that was when I was in Bible school and I was sitting under the Word of God and just getting my life enriched in it and growing in faith. And healing came. And uh, you know, healing always comes. It's what we do with it. So you just compared the pursuit of healing through faith in the same way that you would pursue Wimbledon. So you would see the journey of receiving the healing with the same determination as you would something practical like winning the championship. Well, you know, to be a champion in sport, you had to train and it was repetition. Yeah. I found in this, taking faith is repetition. Wow. And, uh, you know, when you go to bed at night and there's fear there, I think, no, I haven't got a spirit of fear. Your power and love and sound mind. And, and I'd say it. And I'd just like a, a cow chewing the cud or repetition, line upon line, precept upon precept. And I'd let my thoughts, instead of going to the anxiousness or the fear of it, I'd let it go. And Jesus, I thank you. I trust you. I had to learn to trust the Word. Mm. I had to learn to trust this Bible with all my heart. Yep. Lean not to my own. And you'll do that for the rest of your life. Wow. It's an ongoing thing, and you just and you may come up to another level and something else come. But you have to keep doing the Word of God. You know we can hear it, but we have to do it also. For people who receive healing, and you did touch on it briefly, 
What should people do when they receive their healing? I, I know we often encourage people to send in their testimonies, but on a day-to-day -day basis, when, I mean, we see miracles almost yeah, yeah. every weekend. What, what is something that you've learned is critical to uh, whether it's maintaining your healing or what you would encourage people to do? Well, when I knew that I was healed the same way as I took the medicine to get healed, was I started to share my testimony. And because in uh, Revelation says that you overcome him. Who do you overcome the devil? By the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Okay. So you give glory to Jesus. We thank Jesus that, that we're healed. And we start to give our, our testimony and, and speaking it and thanking him and sharing it. I found I shared it with others. I helped so many others. I just shared with them what I'd learned, just the basics of it, and this is how I got healed. Wow. And I'd find that other people around me and my friends and people start to get healed. Yeah. And you're overcome by the blood, the lamb. Share your testimony. Wow. Okay, fantastic. So if you have any testimonies to share with us, we would love to hear them. Uh, I think we start closing up, but one thing that you finished today's session with at Healing School was some faith confessions. and. I felt as soon as you taught and you encouraged people, but I think as right now, if we were to do some confessions, whether you're listening on the bus, maybe you can <laughs> say them under your breath a little bit quieter, but maybe you're at home listening, please take this. Uh, yeah, can you share some confessions with these people? Well, I think, you know, one of them I always say is, you can say this uh, after me is greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because mm. Jesus lives within us and we've got to get a revelation from the inside out who the resurrected Christ. And we could say, I thank you, Jesus, that Christ, Jesus Christ, that you live within me. Not I that liveth, but the Christ that liveth within me. And another one is that I am more than a conqueror, an overcomer. And the other one I believe as we've been talking about is, I haven't got a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. You can say those out loud uh, and you know, they're just so powerful that they make you feel so much better. And I noticed even the people this morning that saying the scripture, how powerful it becomes. And uh, you know, you may be out there also and you don't know Jesus. You may never, you might have been like me, I went to church all my life, mm -hmm. thought I was born into it. No, the same way I've been teaching you is how we come into the kingdom, when we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. So you might like to say this prayer after me, and we can say it together. Say, Dear Jesus, forgive me for my sins of my past. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and I confess with my mouth this day that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. I thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart today. And I'll follow you all the days of my life. If you said that and you meant it, Jesus Christ has come to live on the inside of you uh, today. The miracle workers come to live on the inside of you. The healers come to live on the inside of you. And then the, that's why this Bible, it's a book of faith, it's a book of promises. And when you start to take it as medicine, particularly from Ephesians through to, the, to Jude, in there there's wonderful, wonderful promises for the church age and who we are in Christ. And... Uh, you know, we love you. Uh, we look forward to sharing with you again. And I praise God that his healing power. And maybe just as we're finishing there, I'll pray for you for healing also. And if you're out there and uh, just receive, I think that one of the greatest things is receive and expecting to receive from God because Jesus spoke but a word and the Spirit's left. So receive from the word of God today. Father, I just thank you. Anybody listening to this or watching this, Father, we just thank you for your healing mercies. Father, I thank you for your miracle working power. I thank you for your love and compassion for all mankind, Lord Jesus. I just thank you, Father. 
I thank you for your miracle working power flowing through people, that Jesus, you took their infirmities and sicknesses. By your stripes they are healed. And cancer's nothing but a name, it bows its knee to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kidney problems, nothing but a name. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus flowing through those kidneys. Pain, you foul spirit, go. Get off bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We just thank you, Lord Jesus. You took infirmities and sicknesses. And Father, I just thank you for anybody there listening. Depression, you're a name. Bow yeah. your knee to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go in Jesus' name. Father, I just thank you for your healing mercies. Upon the people listening to this, we just thank you for it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for watching, guys. We will see you on the next episode where we continue receiving your, hate, uh, your healing through faith with the prayer of agreement. Till next time, God bless. If today's message encouraged you in any way, we simply ask for two things, that you share this with a friend, and if you'd like to partner with us, we'd love to receive your offering. Simply head to victorylifecenter.com.au forward slash give. Till next time, God bless.